I want to do a couple things in this short talk. First of all, I want to talk about the immune system, which I think is one of the most amazing things in biology. So I hope to give you an appreciation for something that is really super cool. But I also hope to use this talk as a bit of a meta lesson. I want to show you a few ways that you can present science in hopefully somewhat unorthodox, creative ways that are completely accessible to students, particularly young learners, but will also challenge them to synthesize information, to work through narrative, and to gain a deeper understanding than they might otherwise. Like a spy novel, I aim to tell the story of the immune system from a number of different perspectives. And then at the very end, if it's not already become clear, we'll work to tie them all together. So I'm assuming that you're here because you want to break into the human body. And it's a tough goal, but it's a worthy one. I can't think of a better place to live than in the human body. It's got all the food you can eat. I mean, really, like humans, just like eating all that fast food and pizza all day, you can sip off just a touch of the food that's in the human body and you will be set to live, okay? But it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. So what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through some of the steps that you're gonna have to take to get into the human. Most of you aren't gonna make it, but for the few of you that are, you'll be duly rewarded. So what you really want to look for is you want to look for a lovely, lovely little cut, a nice little break in the fence to get right in there. That's the best route. Maybe a nice abrasion after a little bike ride and a fall from it. You can get right into the blood. It'll be perfect. Now, assuming that you can't find your way into a cut or an abrasion, it's the holes, the holes you want to be on the end be on the lookout for. The <laughs> eyes, oh, the nose, the mouth, the ears too. Right on in, it'll be awesome. Now these guys, these holes are not gonna be quite as easy as the cuts, and I'll tell you why. Each one of these has a series of secondary defenses. Okay, the eyes, they look great. The, the, the mouth, fabulous, right down the throat. But the eyes and the mouth, okay, they're both making something. It's a very toxic substance called lysozyme that has the ability to dissolve your whole outer shell. It'll be dissolved, and you're gonna pop. I don't recommend it. Now, the nose, nose might seem okay, because it's not usually wet, but you go far up in there, and there's mucus. You're gonna get stuck in all that mucus. It's gonna be like a disgusting fly trap in the dirtiest diner you've ever seen. That fly paper just hanging up there, you don't wanna end up stuck in that. Now the throat, throat's a good option if you can make it past the saliva and the lysozyme in that saliva in the mouth. But that won't be easy either. You go down the trachea and it's filled with little bristles called cilia that work like brooms. And they're gonna be trying to sweep you out the whole time. Here's a movie, a little animation. What's gonna happen if you look at the cross section of a person? Got some bacteria, maybe just like you, that are trying to get in? Ah, but they're gonna get on the side of that trachea and get swept right back out with those cilia. It's gonna be pretty problematic. But these are all decent options to try, and some of them, some of them might work. All right, that's step one. You make it past these external defenses. That's great, that's great, okay. But now the next thing, this is when it gets serious, all right? Here's the outside of a uh, person, maybe the inside of their throat or their skin. We got the outside here, and then we got some blood flowing through. All right, now, here you are coming on in. You found a cut, you've been able to make it past all these cilia that are trying to sweep you away, or the lysozyme hasn't popped you. All these cells up here, this part of the body, they're gonna know you're there. They're gonna detect your presence. And as soon as they tell that something's not quite right, they're gonna sound the alarm, and they're gonna start making chemicals that are gonna tell the body 
to come after you. Here's you on the right. Here's a phagocytic cell that has floated here from the bloodstream and has slipped out to come and get you. These phagocytic cells have the ability to detect foreign invaders. They wrap themselves around them just like a hug of death until they'll internalize you and release chemicals that are going to break you apart. These phagocytes, they're, they're scary too because they have the ability to follow you. They can smell invaders. You can run, but you can't hide from these phagocytes. Here is the sad tale <laughs> of a little bacterium that's trying to run away from a phagocyte. He can run, he can run, he can run, but the phagocyte can follow him because the phagocyte can sense, can smell chemicals that that bacteria is releasing. Oh. <laughs> Didn't end so well. But hey, maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. Maybe you'll make it past all the external defenses, make it past the phagocytes that get released. Maybe you'll be lucky. Then you'll have the real security forces to deal with. So, uh, so uh, I'm a B cell. And um, you know, I, I, I'm a tough guy. When the phagocytes, when they can't do their job right, I come in. I have, to, I have to come and I gotta fix it, you know? I'm a tough guy, uh, but I'm a touchy guy too. You know, I, I go around, I, I give everyone a little squeeze. You know, I give everyone a little hug. I say, hey, how you doing? And it's, you know, I give, you, I, I give these, these guys a hug and that's how I tell whether they're okay or not. You know, I go over to the heart, give them a little squeeze, and say, yeah, yeah, you're doing good heart, keep pumping, keep doing your thing. You know, I go, I feel, feel some muscle cells, doing great, doing great, love you, keep flexing. All good. But every once in a while, I give someone a little squeeze and I'm like, ah, oh, that, oh, that don't feel quite right. That don't feel quite right. I think maybe it'll fit in here. And when I figure that out, that's when I sound the alarm. I got these little claws, all right? Scientists maybe call them antigen receptors. I call them claws. And it's with these claws, it's, it's what, what I do with my feeling, you know? And here's how this works, all right? It's like all things, like biological or whatever, okay? They're all made of what we call cells, okay? They're like these trillion little building blocks that make up humans. Now, the thing that I'm showing you on this picture is that there are these little, little shapes on the surface of all these cells, okay? So here, here, here's some of the shapes. We got them here on the human cells. These are the shapes. And then the enemies, these, uh, these bad guys here, they got shapes too. And if I want to be all scientific about it, I might call these shapes some epitopes. Now, here's how this works. You remember I got these little claws, okay? It's these little, little, ep little epitopes that I go around. I go around feeling these epitopes all day, okay? I go to this E. coli. He's a bad guy. He'll give you awful diarrhea. It's a nightmare, all right? <laughs> I'm here to keep you safe. So I go up, he's got these epitopes, I go with my little claws. Look at that. My claw, it fits right onto that epitope of the E. coli. We come together, I grab onto him, right? Like that's how I know he don't belong. <laughs> he fits right in there. Now the thing is I say, go around feeling things, I know, okay, you're good, no big deal, you know, hog, you keep pumping. How do I know that? Well, because of the shapes here on the nerve cell, they don't fit my claws. We got, like a, we got like a square, I got the triangle. So I go to the nerve, I'm like, oh, we got square, we got triangle, it don't fit. All right, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I go to the heart, oh no, I got the triangle, you got the square, it don't fit. That's okay, keep doing your thing, heart. I go to the nerve, I go to the muscle cell, yeah, you flexing, you're looking good, you know? I got the triangle, you got the square, that's fine. <laughs> fine, keep doing your thing, you don't fit. But if you fit, that's trouble. <laughs> Now, when a B cell becomes activated from the squadron, our body goes into hyper alert mode. Two things happen. First of all, we begin the production of a large number of weapons. We call these antibody weapons, and these look very much like the antigen receptors that were on the surface of those B cells. All of the antibodies have shapes at their end that look exactly like the antigen receptors that were on the B cell 
that first detected that pathogen. So in other words, we're going to be creating highly, highly specialized weapons that are made specifically for the pathogen that the squadron earlier detected. The second thing that's going to happen is an activated B cell is going to produce memory B cells, which are going to give us heightened surveillance for the future. When a B cell is activated, it will create many copies of itself having the same shape at the end of its antigen receptors. In the future, instead of just one B cell with that shape clause floating around the bloodstream, there will be hundreds and thousands of extra memory B cells floating around ready to detect that same bacterium in the future. I'm gonna give you a little shot. And the shot's gonna pinch a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. The shot is gonna protect you from getting chicken pox in the future. And the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna inject a little bit of dead chicken pox right into you. And this chicken pox, even though it's dead, its outsides still look like live chicken pox. And your immune system is gonna take a look at the outside of this dead chicken pox, and it's gonna be on alert in the future. It's gonna know, hey, this is something that's not so good, this is something that's bad, we wanna be on the lookout for it. So, in summary, those are the three very interesting ways that the immune system works. It's able to kill accurately and effectively. It's able to tell self from non-self by looking at the epitopes, looking at the shapes that are on the outside of things. And third, the immune system is able to have a memory because once it's been activated by a specific epitope, it makes many, many more B cells that are gonna be on alert, on lookout for pathogens with that exact epitope on their surface. So that is a brief introduction to the immune system for you and also hopefully an idea of some additional ways that you can present scientific information to, uh, to your students. Thank you very much.